Is I reveal to you the quintessential Australian wine. Oh, <laughs> Hello guys, it's Angus here and we're starting off this podcast looking and sounding a little different. That's because I'm in the editing suite of the podcast studio uh, the day after we recorded the episode you're about to listen to. Now I know you've clicked on this episode so you've seen that the title says Goon. G-O-O-N, but for our Portuguese, UK, American followers and listeners, you might not know what that is. And basically, it's cask wine. Uh, in Australia, we affectionately call it goon. Uh, sometimes we use it as a portable raft device. Uh, around Christmas time, we play goon or fortune, where in our backyards, we swing around our clothesline, and if you're standing underneath it, you have to have a good gulp. Or I think I referenced as a kid as well, I'm um, finding my mum's stash from a brand called Cooler Bar, I think, and we called it Man on a Boat. Um, but yeah, it's very cheap, large quantity. I think it's four liters of wine. And uh, I surprised Carlos with this blind tasting. So with all that information, enjoy. This was actually a gift. Mm -hmm. The wine that we are going to be blind tasting today. Well, I say you are going to be blind tasting, Master Sommelier Carlos. I know what it is. Uh, I opened up the bottle. Um, we are going to bring it in right now. We've already put it into the glass. I didn't want the bottle to give away because a bottle can give away um, mm -hmm. the location, mm -hmm. the style. So here is oh, a white wine. Oh, it is wine. a white. It is a white wine. Oh. So thank you very much to the person who gifted this to us. Um, we're going to start on the appearance of this, Carlos, as you try and figure out from all the varieties of white mm -hmm. what this could be, just based oh, wow. off appearance. Is there anything that you want to knock out? All right. Well, appearance um, appearance is a medium or pale, almost a pale gold um, color so they may indicate a little bit of age it may indicate that there is a little bit of you know oxidation exposure to um, exposure to air uh, through some barrel aging perhaps um, could you know yeah could indicate maybe that there is um, some drying of grapes in the vine as well a little bit deeper color so you know that um, that that can tell already quite a quite a bit can't really pick much from the tears running down. They're quite, quite thin. Mm -hmm. Well, let's try it on the nose. Sure. Uh, nose is uh, is of uh, primary aromas, so a little bit of uh, apple, uh, yellow apple, rather than that green tart apple that we've tried so often in the Rieslings. Um, it's more yellow apple. Not super fragrant, though. No, not super fragrant. It's uh, uh, you know, it's, it's fairly fairly neutral um, at this stage. A little bit of white flower, maybe a touch of jasmine, but but then again, it's so it's it's very uh, it's very very shy. So I think. Or this, could it not be shy? Um, sorry. Could it? Could that just be it? I mean, maybe it's not yeah, shy. Yeah, maybe it's just how it is, and that and maybe that's you're fine. Give that's, it more credit than what it deserves. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm just trying to look behind, beyond. You know, what's what's the obvious stuff, but there's not really uh, anything coming coming up. Any any sort of at the moment, any sort of uh, ideas maybe, of what this could be? At the, yeah, look, we could go with wines like this uh, on the nose. You know, uh, fairly neutral. You could think of a Pinot Grigio, but with Pinot Grigio, I would expect it to be a, to have a more a gray tone to it you could think of um, you know it could be a chardonnay it would i think yeah chardonnay could be a good option uh pinot grigio could be a good option uh it's not a aromatic or semi-aromatic varietal it's more a, a fairly neutral grape variety so um what else could there be a grunewald liner but i think it would have more herbaceous or herbal notes uh riesling would have more aromatics um I think you need to get it on the palate. Yeah, I'm just... No, just, I get it. Just trying to break it down for what it is. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah, it's very gently off dry. So that, that leads me now to... Um, that leads in, you know, of dry wines in the world. You could think of, um, yeah, German Riesling. You could think of Alsace. Not not the really rich, sweet styles of uh, of wine around the world, but uh, yeah, you know, I have, a, I have a good idea of what this wine could be. But then again, um, on the 
on the nose is not really expressive. You know, this this was leading on the palate. Mm -hmm. uh, straight away, I got a little bit of um, a rose petal, lychee, uh, alongside the sweetness, which led me to gewurztraminer. But uh, alcohol-wise, I would expect it to be higher. Yeah, I mean, it's not Riesling because Riesling would have a higher acidity. Um, I'm not convinced in a Gewurztraminer because of the aromatic, even though there's just a touch of uh, maybe more rose petal than lychee, actually. It's the lychee was maybe just that first impression, but is the mind trying to go somewhere? I'll give you not necessarily some clues. I'll tell you a little couple of facts about this. Mm -hmm. This is a famous Australian wine. Mm. And I'm not sure you've ever had it. <laughs> Which is why it might be so difficult to put uh. down to a Pinot Grigio, Grunewald Lina. Do you think it's a good wine? Mm. I mean, you said entry level before. Mm. There's one thing for me that's so obvious, which is it's like the most ridiculous short finish. Mm. I was trying with a little bit of residual sugar, low acid. Um, it's not really over alcoholic either, but it's not. Well, okay, so thinking Australian varietals or, you know, classic varietals. Um, I don't really find any oak either or malolactic too much. Def definitely no oak. Um, I mean, Chardonnay, we've mentioned before. Uh, Pinot Grigio, typically in Australia, Mornington examples are much drier than this. Uh, let me just think. Semillon would be much higher acid, Riesling much higher acid. Um, it's funny because it, it doesn't fit the perfect characteristics for any wine that we've had, does it? No. Like a Get, blend maybe or something? Um, I'm not even giving a tip. I, I actually don't know what grape is used in this particular bottle. But I, I, it might be a blend, but I, I'm literally guessing. I'm joining mm. you on that part. Because you're right, it doesn't taste like a Semillon, doesn't taste like a Riesling, doesn't taste like a... I mean, probably... It's like a Chardonnay. I know, a little bit Chardonnay because the colour and the body weight a little bit. Yeah, but a Chardonnay is, tastes, tastes quite, you know, a little bit of sweetness, which is so misleading. I don't think there's oak, partial malolactic, but can't really think uh, of anything classic Australian. That everyone's tried. I would say, like, if you're listening to this podcast, at least, not everyone in Australia, but if you've come to this podcast to learn or love wine, then you've probably tried this. Do you want me to give you a tip, a little hint about where I first tried this? Mm. <laughs> uh, when I was 14 years old, my mum was hiding this in her house and I found it and over uh -huh. like a period of like, I wouldn't drink it every day, but like I reckon like once every two weeks I'd remember that it was there and I would go and taste it. And I'd get a little bit, you know, tipsy off it because I was 14 or 15. And mum, let's just say when mum, mum still probably didn't find out, but she wouldn't have cared. <laughs> because there's no alcohol. Or what? You ready for the reveal? Yeah. Bring Are you it sure? On. Yeah. It's some weird stuff again, like the green. You bring it around uh, the back. Don't look this way. I'll bring it around the like back. Like the green, uh, the green stuff that you brought once. Oh, the hemp flavored wine. Oh my goodness. It is not that, Carlos. Look to me as I reveal to you. The quintessential Australian wine. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's goon, baby. Oh my goon. It is oh goon. Oh my goon. Oh, oh my goon. goon. I just love how a professional oh. <laughs> master sommelier yeah. who works in wine I didn't still want to. tried to figure out what it could be. Far out. Does this make your top three? No. All right, Amelia's got the box. The box. Well, Jeez. traditionally, like this is. Uh, fruity Lexia is what we call it, um, but it's fruity wine. They describe it as tropical a tropical Melbourne. Well, yeah, it doesn't. No, yeah. Oh, far out. <laughs> this, you know, it's very humbling because, you know, it's very humbling because it's very, it's very huge. I just don't try this stuff ever. Mm, you know, I at know. the restaurant, it, you start with the premium. You know, so. And sometimes there's but there are bad wines as well on the premium, you know. You no, can, there's no yeah. varietal whatsoever. 
No. There's no variety. Yeah. No, uh, and whatever, you, whatever right they because... find, they will go in. You know, it's uh... yeah, whatever the offcut. So up. that's why it's so hard to pick because it's like a nose of a Chardonnay kind of thing. You know, neutral Pinot Grigio or something. But then on the palate is a little bit sweeter, so mm. it's a little bit more tropical on the on the on the palate. But it's in between everything. Like, so if you do see Carlos after this episode comes out on the Friday, <laughs> underneath the railway line, he decided to take this goon bag home because sometimes we decide <laughs> who takes what bottle home, and Carlos might be taking this. Yeah, one. I will cook. Uh, I will cook my. Uh, Would you cook even with this? Yeah, uh, you could cook with it. Yeah, I mean, our producer you, you have Amelia to, you is have like, to... "What are you talking about? That's good stuff." <laughs> You have to you have to boil it, you know. You have to. Uh... I won't bother. Sorry, mate. Cheers. Classic Australian. <laughs> the first time, none of us sip afterwards. 